It cannot get much worse than that. The Matthew scripture starts with an official's daughter died. You see that when that sinks in, the natural order that we kind of get used to, yet still very, very painful, is that our grandparents die, that our parents die, our pets die, even our partners die, but that your baby dies. It doesn't get much worse than that. And I love our scriptures because they are so realistic. They talk about heartbreak. They talk about your life is falling apart. You just cannot keep it all together. And we have experienced some of that nightmare together. Yesterday, the 13th, it was exactly one year since our Sealands Grove schools closed. I can remember hearing the news, school closed March 13th, 2020. We thought, well, maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks, well, no. We have experienced a collective heartbreak, things falling apart, being uprooted, our lives being turned upside down, and it's not over yet. And that's a little bit like this woman who comes to Jesus, she's longing for healing, and it says in the scriptures here, she has been bleeding for 12 years. And we have been sighing, at least I have been sighing, for 12 months right now. Sometimes I have one of those loud breaths at home. I feel like, ah. and then my wife asks me, what's going on? And I think like, I'm tired of it. Can you imagine someone who has been bleeding for 12 years, how desperate? how tired, how exhausted, just almost at the end of the rope, giving up hope. No wonder she's longing, she's desperate, she's ready to, ah, oh, finally, I want something to change, I want some healing, I want some wholeness. Our lives, my friends, unfold with the story of this official or manager and his daughter who died, and this woman who is bleeding, losing lifeblood. Our lives unfold from ash oops, through Holy Week and Good Friday. It feels like one long story of never-ending suffering. And you know, Ash Wednesday, the ashes from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes, from earth to earth, just makes us so very aware of our mortality. We're not in charge of our lives, my friends. We're not in charge of our lives. If there is one message there, that is one for me from the whole COVID. There are things, there are powers, there are energies that are beyond what I can control and what I'm called to control. So how do we deal with that? That most of life cannot be fixed. You know, a car breaks down, you can fix it. Your bulb blows up, you get a new bulb. 
whatever most things can be fixed. There are some things you cannot fix, but most things somehow you can replace or fix or tape or whatever you can do with them. Life is not like that. Life is not fixable. It's terminal. Yeah, we don't get out of here alive, do we? Uh, it's hard, you don't see my laugh uh, behind the mask. So what do we do with that? Well, I think it's very realistic. What I love about these scriptures is, and the Bible, and Jesus' suffering and his death, and our suffering and our brokenness, it's so real. It's just as close as you're pinching yourself. And what does it do? What it does is, it kind of pops all those beautiful bubbles that we dream of and that we think of, well, the fountain or the myth of eternal youth. Well, how long does that last? Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, pop, it's, been gonna, it's gonna go. How about those golden years on the Costa del Sol? Well, pop, it may not be those golden years. What about the happily ever after? You know, always wonder about those fairy tales. They get married and it says happily ever after. Well, it may not look so happy after that. That's where it all starts, my friends. Someone said marriage is the way for two people to be able to annoy each other for a very long time. Yeah. So what is being popped through the reality, through COVID, through the brokenness, through the darkness, through those things that seem to fall apart? And we all have those aspects in our lives. Desperate, dispirited, and exasperated. These are the words that all are connected, and they have the word spirit in them. It's being out of spirit, being out of life, out of breath, like this father, like this woman, like each one of us in one way or another. We feel like, uh, at least I feel like sighing. I don't know about you. But then... Something changes, and there is a true encounter, a true meeting of Jesus and of these people who are longing for healing and for wholeness. Now, once the makeup is off, once the polish is off, you just, you don't have to keep up appearances anymore. That's what I like here. Just... It's not about the show, it's not about, it's about the deeper things. So when you, when I, when we are able to let go of our dreams, of our visions, of our life being like heaven, that's when we may be able to embrace what life really is about. Give you an example. The two disciples who went on the road to Emmaus, they were just grieving. They were sobbing. Jesus walks with them. They don't recognize him. And they talk about the hopes and the dreams they had that Jesus would deliver Israel. You hear it? Their hopes, their dreams had died. What hopes, what dreams, what strange imagination are you invited to let go and bury and die? And or what is it in you that is dying? 
what needs to die in order to make room for the new. Jesus is talking about this, the seed that is to be planted. He uses that for his own life. Not even Jesus got out of this alive. No. Even Jesus died. But he says there is something, you got to plant it. You got to let it go. You got to bury it. Only by doing that, new life can come from it. Or the valley of the dry bones. Uh, Ezekiel sees that. It's devastation. It looks like after a nightmare, after a war, after total destruction. And uh, God asked the prophet, do you see any life left there? Can you make these come alive? And uh, Ezekiel says, no way. This is so much more. No way. There's no life in these bones. And then God's spirit comes and there is a revival something coming back to life from that death. Jesus, the image of the big tree of Jesse, the tree of life being felled, being cut off. Something being cut off. Then Jesus talks about that shoot that comes from that root of, Tressy, uh, of the tree of Jesse. New life is possible, but <clears throat> only, in my experience, when we're willing to trust and let go and bury and are not too caught up in our own dreamy, rosy world, some of those bubbles will be popped and need to be popped in order to let go, to trust, to relax into life, and to offer ourselves, offer ourselves to the living God. Because that's where desperation, where the spirit, when one is desperate or dispirited or exasperated, where God's spirit can breathe new life into it. I remember when I learned to swim. My mom put me in the water. And I was desperate. I was just desperate. Just paddling, paddling with all. And I breathed in and breathed in and breathed in. And I felt like just way too much. And then my mom held her hands under me just to hold me. She said, relax, relax. Well, wasn't that easy to relax in that water? Wasn't that easy? But breathing out and letting go and trusting that the water would carry me, the water would hold, that there is some buoyancy there. Where and how are you invited to trust, to let go of the old that falls apart in order for the Spirit of God to breathe new life into you? Where and how and what are you invited to let go and trust, hand over, so that the Spirit of God can breathe new life into you? Hmm. 